Hey everybody, I still miss you so much, but I have enjoyed the things we've gotten to do to keep in contact this week. It's been fun, we had our Zoom potluck, we had our house party games, we've text messaged, we've called, that's been great. Let's jump right back in, we're gonna continue our study, we're gonna move a couple chapters to Mark chapter 12. Now we only have a couple regular Bible studies left this semester, and so I'm having to weed out and decide what's most important to talk about. But this week is easy because Jesus himself said, this is the most important thing to talk about. So that's where we're going to pick up in Mark chapter 12, verses 28 through 31. One of the scribes approached when he heard them debating and saw that Jesus answered them well. He asked him, which commandment is the most important of all? This is the most important, Jesus answered. Listen, Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind. The second is love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. You know, when I read this passage this week, I thought of an Abraham Lincoln quote. Because Abraham Lincoln was asked one time in a debate, and he was, he was not a good-looking man. And someone asked him if he was two-faced, and he said... If I had two faces, would I wear this one in public? And I'm sure everybody laughed because it wasn't very good looking. And you're kind of stuck with your face. We can gussy it up and we can do some things to distract. But at the end of the day, you look how you look. In the same way, you feel how you feel. We can't control what we like and what we don't like. We can do some things and hope that things grow on us. But we don't really have control on whether they do grow on us or not. Maybe when you were a kid, your mom said, eat your carrots and like them. Maybe you ate your carrots. Maybe you faked it. But I bet you still don't like them if you didn't like them then. Because we can't control how we feel. So what does that say about this commandment that Jesus gives us? He says that we have to love God with all our heart, all our mind, all our strength, and all our soul. How do we do that if we can't control how we feel? Well, when we say love, we usually mean a feeling. But the Greek language is just a little bit more articulate here. There are three Greek words that we use in the Bible commonly to express love, to translate to love. The first word is philo, like Philadelphia is the city of brotherly love, or philosophy is the love of wisdom. And that philo word basically means really strong like. You really enjoy something. There's eros. Now, that word, you might think of Aries or Cupid. That's the word for romance or or sometimes even lust. And that word might be used in a word like erotic. But the love we're talking about here is agape love. And that is godly love. And agape love is different than those other kind of loves because each time agape love is used in the Bible, it is defined by the actions and the characteristics that go with it. In other words, it's not a feeling, it's an action. Now, Jesus says in another passage when he talks about these same two greatest commandments that all of the law can be summed up in these two things. So this is a very broad concept. This agape word is very broad. But if I had to have one word synonym that I would pick to say this is as close as we can get in English, I would say service. It's what do you serve? What do you seek after and promote? And so Jesus says here to agape, to serve the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, and all your strength. Now that sounds a little bit like he's just emphasizing with all your everything. And that's true. But what he does here is he gives us an outline that we can analyze our life with and see if we are serving him or not. When Jesus says, serve God with all your heart, he's talking about our passions. What do we seek after? What do we pursue? What do we go after in our life? Do we seek after glorifying God and serving him? Or do we seek after glorifying ourselves? Or do we seek after glorifying something else that we've placed in front of God? In the same way, our mind, what do we think about? What do we plot and scheme? What do we ponder What do we analyze? 
The Bible tells us we are to take captive every thought and fix it in accordance with the will of Jesus. We need to worship God, serve God with our minds. In the same way, our strength. We seek God and we serve Him with our strength, with our body itself, with the energy that we have, with the things that we do with our body, the things that we wear with our body, the places we go with our body, the things we do with our energy. Do they seek to serve God or glorify something else, us or someone else? Now, Jesus said about agape love, greater man, great, have no love, have no agape than this, then he lay down his life for his friends. That's what it means to have a godly service. And God calls us to serve with our heart, our mind, and our strength. But he also calls us to serve him with our soul. Now, that's confusing because just like we use love in a lot of ways, we use heart and soul almost interchangeably in English. You might say somebody has the heart of a poet, and you might say someone has the soul of a poet, and you mean exactly the same thing. But in the Bible, when Jesus uses soul, he's talking about the eternal thing in us. There are two created things that dwell on earth that will last forever. God's word and men's souls. That's it. And our souls will exist long after our eyeballs quit working, long after our body decays, our soul will still exist. So how do we invest in the eternal to serve God? Do the things that we do have eternal consequence, eternal significance? Does the legacy we leave point to Jesus? When people think of us long after we're gone, do they think about Jesus? Or do they think about something else that we loved, something else that we pursued? God calls us to agape him. And he says, they will know you are Christians by your love. And it's that same word. They will know you are Christians by your agape. So that's how he calls us to be identified in him. So that's love. But then Jesus lays out the second commandment. And he says, love your neighbor as yourself. Which brings us to another question. Who's our neighbor? You know, Jesus was telling the same story, was talking about these same two commandments at another point in the Bible when a lawyer stood up and he thought he had a loophole and he said, but who is my neighbor? And Jesus told the story of the good Samaritan. And in that story, there's a man who's robbed and left for dead on the side of the road. Then a priest comes by, keeps on walking. A Levite comes by, keeps on locking, walking. Then a Samaritan, an unclean Samaritan, takes him, provides for him, tells the innkeeper, I'll come back if he needs more. And at the end of that story, Jesus asked the crowd who was a neighbor to that man. And everyone said, the Samaritan. Then Jesus said, go and do likewise. You see, that lawyer said, who is my neighbor? And Jesus said, you be a neighbor. Because serving God is not about what people do to us. It's about reacting and interacting with people in a way that glorifies God. So we are each called to be a neighbor and to agape others, to serve others and love them in a way that glorifies God. So I have two challenges for you this week that I want you to work on. You've got some free time. You're at home. You're quarantined. Here's two things I want to challenge you to do. Number one, I want you to ask yourself how you can agape your neighbor, how you can love your neighbor in this time. And I have seen some really great, really effective, really created ways to agape your neighbor this week. I've seen people sewing masks for first responders and 3D printing masks for first responders. I've seen people set up snack boxes and providing them to, to kids and to first responders and to people that have needs. I even saw one guy that set up a Fortnite game with a bunch of people that don't have a lot of social interaction so they could play games together. This might be the only time in your life God is calling you to play a video game. Maybe it's something old school. Maybe it's a text message. Or maybe, and this might be the first time in your life you've done this, you get out a piece of paper and you write an actual letter to somebody and you look up their actual address and you put an actual stamp on it and you put it in the mail and you change somebody's week when they open it up and realize someone loved them enough to use snail mail. I don't know. Whatever it is, 
Think of some way to agape your neighbor this week. That's the challenge number one. Challenge number two is this. Paul gives us a great list of the aspects of agape in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. He tells us love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, it always trusts, it always hopes, it always perseveres. I want to challenge you this week, open your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and go through that checklist and ask yourself about your life about your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. Do they embody the good things in 1 Corinthians 13 or maybe the bad things too? And the things you need to work on, circle them and come back to. And keep account this week and going forward. Am I showing love? Am I living in agape life? Do I see patience in my life? Do I see kindness? Am I boastful? Am I envious? And keep inventory of your life and see if we're doing the two greatest commandments. Now, the last thing I want us to do is pray. And then stick around because we're going to talk about one other thing. Father God, I thank you so much that we can be here today wherever we are. I pray that you'd speak to us and you'd help us to agape this world. Agape our neighbors and agape you with all of our hearts. Help us to love you and serve you. In your precious son's name, amen. Hey guys, I want to invite you to log on at 9.30 tonight for our Zoom party. We're going to log on. We'll have some time to pray. We'll talk about what's going on in our lives, about what needs we have. We'll just tell some stories. And then last week we switched over and played some online games. We may do that too. But it's a great chance to just have some community and spend some time together. So I'll see you right here at 930. There will be a link on the Facebook group page. Thank you very much. God bless.